Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video we're going to react to Europe's tornado alleys. This is a topic that I've really wanted to explore for a while because so I've never seen a tornado before, at least in England. I've not heard of one being reported. I've not heard any stories of any tornadoes in England. To my knowledge, tornadoes just don't happen here, or at least they're just so small and so brief that they don't register on anybody's radar. But Europe is obviously a much bigger place. There's going to be parts of Europe that have the conditions for tornadoes, so that combination of warm air and flat land. So they must happen in, in, in Europe somewhere, but I wouldn't know where to begin. I think, I think Italy has had a few before. This video is sponsored by Ground News. On the 6th of October, 1981, at around 5.04 p.m., this exact tornado formed right next to the Rotterdam airport near Moordijk in the Netherlands. At the same time, NLM City Hopper Flight 431 was lifting off of the runway. As the plane ascended into the sky, it briefly flew through a layer of clouds. But as it came out on the other side, the plane found itself flying straight towards the tornado. The pilots uh, didn't have enough time to react, and they flew oh directly no. into the funnel. The plane came out on the other side of the tornado completely disintegrated. Oh. It then fell from the sky, crashing into the ground, killing all 17 passengers on board. Oh, the data from the flight recorder actually showed a sudden increase in altitude, but that wasn't actually a sudden increase in altitude. That was the low pressure region of the tornado. So it has essentially been proven that the plane did indeed enter the funnel. It's a very tragic story and it's a surprising story because not many people really think about tornadoes in the Netherlands or in Europe in general. They think yeah. of Kansas and Oklahoma, but tornadoes do happen in Europe and they can be just as dangerous. And that's what we're talking about today. We're gonna to discuss the tornadic history of the many different regions of Europe, from the UK to Germany, to Poland, to France, to Belgium, to Spain, to Italy, all over Europe. We're gonna find out which countries and regions have the highest concentration of tornadic activity. Mm. We're going to discover Europe's tornado alleys. All right. Let's get into it. Because, yeah, I've just you just don't hear about them. All happening. right, let's start off with the United Kingdom, specifically looking at England with what I call the English Tornado Alley. Because, fun fact, England within the UK actually has more tornadoes per square foot than any country on Earth. No Yes, including way. the US. England has 2.2 tornadoes a year per 10,000 square miles, while the US only has 1.2 tornadoes per 10,000 square miles. What? Now, it's a little bit misleading because technically England is a lot smaller than the US and... You know, I mean, if you like just took Florida, for example, there's actually 12 tornadoes per 10,000 square miles in Florida, like way more than England. So, yeah, it's a bit misleading. But either way, England and the UK in general do have some potential for some pretty wild tornadoes. Really? Most of these tornadoes occur in the central plains of England, and they are very weak, like very, mm. very weak. Like you can drive through them on the highway weak. Mm. Reed Timmer would be very proud of that tornado intercept. Very impressive. Stronger tornadoes do occur. One notable example is the December 8th, 1954 West London tornado. This was rated as a T7 or Toro 7 tornado, equivalent to an F3, with wind speeds in the 150 to 160 mile per hour range. Fortunately, no one was killed. This tornado was the strongest of seven in a larger tornado outbreak that struck the greater West London area. A large amount of destruction occurred at the Gunnersbury train station, where the iron roof collapsed onto 15 passengers. Amazingly, they all survived, but nice. eight were taken to the hospital. Tornado activity calmed in the UK for about 30 years. That is until the November 23rd, 1981 Great Britain tornado outbreak. This is actually the European equivalent of a super outbreak, as there were 104 tornadoes recorded throughout the central parts of England. I just can't believe this. Ha I just, I've never heard of this. Maybe because I've not sought out the information, but still. But it wasn't as crazy as you'd think, as they were all extremely weak. There were 21 F unknowns, 24 F zeros, 57 F1s, and only two F2s. The strongest F2, or T5 tornado, occurred in Hollyhead, where 20 homes were heavily damaged, and one mobile home was completely destroyed. In my Tornado Hotspots video, I mentioned how Birmingham, Alabama is hit by tornadoes all the time. It's a very active tornado hotspot within the US. Well, it turns out the original Birmingham, 
Yes, Birmingham, England, which Birmingham, Alabama is named after, is a bit of a tornado hotspot itself. There have been seven recorded tornadoes to hit Birmingham in the past 100 years, and the most recent being on July 28, 2005. Fortunately, no one was killed, but it was still the strongest tornado to hit the UK in wow, 30 years. Look at the, the neighborhoods of Balsall Heath and Sparkbrook were heavily damaged, including a primary school and a historic church the latter of which would need to be demolished due to the oh, damage. Wow. The U.S. may have a larger and more violent tornadoes, but do you know what Europe has that the U.S. doesn't have? History. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Obviously, the U.S. has history. It has great history. I love U.S. history. But European history, it goes way further back than the U.S.'s history. Oh, when it comes man. to Native Americans and tornadoes, there were stories and legends and lore, but there's never been like a specific event that was documented. In Europe, though, we can go way back and find some ancient tornado tales. Like, for example, the October 17th 1091 tornado that struck London was once believed to be the strongest documented tornado in UK history. Modern assessment of the event believe it to have been an EF4 or a T8, with wind speeds in the 180 miles per hour plus range. According to William of Malmesbury, a 12th century English historian, over 600 wooden houses were leveled, resulting in two fatalities. Malmesbury described it as, a great spectacle for those watching from afar, but a terrifying experience for those standing near. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a tornado to me. But enough about ancient tornado tales, I want to briefly mention some recent events. A beautiful tornadic water spout occurred in Suffolk on July 31st. Wow, look at 20 that. Look at the shape of it. I mean, it, does, it looks like something else. <laughs> 16. I'm very envious for those who got to witness this. It's very clean, very, very nice looking. On June 25th, 2021, a weak tornado made quite a mess in the Barking neighborhood of London. Mm. Cars were damaged and a few East brick London. walls collapsed. And a very, very significant, very strong, possibly even an EF3 tornado struck the Channel Island of Jersey only a few months ago on November 26, 2023. It was the largest tornado to hit the UK since the West London tornado of 1954. This tornado tore roofs off and was rated as a T6 on the Toro scale. Very strong, especially for the UK. This tornado was part of a greater European windstorm that claimed 21 lives. Special shout out to Olivia for sending me these photos and videos. So the UK does have a mini tornado alley over the plains mm. of England and does occasionally get strong EF2 low EF3 tornadoes. But, oh. but on average, they're just much weaker than the, the, the American tornadoes, much, much weaker, or at least cause less damage. Overall, things are pretty tame. However, if we travel to the European mainland, things get a little more intense with what I call the Northern Europe Tornado Alley. But before we get to that, tornado season is upon us and you're going to want to stay up to date with all the latest tornado coverage and you can do so with today's sponsor, Ground News. Ground News is an application that takes a description, which is the one that I use. Thank you so much to Ground News for sponsoring the video. On June 29th, 1764, one of the most significant tornado events in meteorological history was beginning to unfold. In the late afternoon, an F2 tornado dropped beneath the cloud layer where it began its path of destruction through an oak forest. Trees were flattened and thrown into the air as the tornado slowly grew wider and stronger. Now at EF3 strength, the tornado tore the roofs off of houses in a small village, claiming one life. It then crossed a lake where witnesses claimed it created a mini tsunami. The tornado continued to grow to over 250 meters wide. Now at EF4 strength, the twister scoured the earth, leaving scars in the soil while destroying an entire birch forest. Continuing along its path of destruction, the tornado would eventually reach over 900 meters across. At this point, it destroyed a strong cobblestone mansion, lifting massive boulders high up into the sky, the kind of destruction only an EF5 would create. After about 19 miles, the tornado finally weakened and roped out. Modern researchers today estimate that this tornado could have had wind speeds over 300 miles per hour, making it one of the most powerful tornadoes on record. Dang. So where was this? Texas? Oklahoma? Perhaps Kansas? No, Italy? it was in northern Germany. Germany. This is known as the 1764 Voidek Germany Tornado. This event was truly insane and has been rated by modern researchers as an EF5 or T11, totally maxing out both the Fujita and Toro scale. It created a 19 mile path of destruction from Feldberg to Helped Germany, which at the time was the Holy Roman Empire. The Lake Tsunami, the destroyed cobblestone mansion, truly an insane event. And you might be wondering, how on earth do we know about this? Like, 
How can we be so sure that this event was so insane? Well, against all odds, the tornado was extremely well documented by Gottlob Bertrand Gensmeer. Sorry if I butchered that pronunciation. He was a German scientist that pretty much did exactly what the National Weather Service does today. He went out, surveyed, and documented the damage. We're talking a 77 paragraph, very detailed paper. He was People from, you know, times before technology must have looked at tornadoes as like acts of God, you know, this is God showing his fury or, you know, like this is judgment day. They must've thought like, this is the end times. It was like the original Ted Fujita. And modern historians and researchers looked at his documentation and concluded that the winds from this tornado would have had to have been in the 300 mile per hour range. Truly an insane event. One quick side note, the ruins shown on screen may be remnants from this exact tornado. I'm not entirely sure if these ruins were already there before the tornado, but either way, it was definitely in the path. It probably says somewhere in this document, but I don't speak German, even though Swegel is technically a German name. LOL. This tornado occurred exactly in what I call the Northern Europe Tornado Alley. It encompasses Northern France, Luxembourg, Belgium, Germany, the Netherlands, and parts of Poland. A much more recent event occurred near the same spot in 2015. On May 5th, a large wedge tornado struck the German town of Butso, where cars, small structures, and trees were heavily damaged. This tornado was given an EF3 rating with winds around 150 miles per hour. Now for a moment, I want to focus in on a specific tornado hotspot within this greater tornado alley. This is a very active tornado region featuring northern France, Belgium, Luxembourg, western Germany, and all of the Netherlands. Let's just go over a few recent events in this region. On August 9th, 2019, an F3 tornado hit southern Luxembourg. Just look at those multiple vortices. Yeah, that's like three, Insane. two three. This tornado had wind speeds of around 150 miles per hour, oh putting it in the God. F3 range. There were two seriously that, injured. Did you see how the building just got ripped to shreds? And there? over 100 homes damaged in the event. Earlier that year, on May 13th, 2019, an F3 tornado hit Western Germany. This tornado practically occurred on the Belgium German border. The tornado hit the town of Rodigan, damaging over 40 homes. You can even see the tornado scar on Google Earth. On May 20th, 2022, a tornado in Western Germany injured over 40 individuals and even took the life of one man. But look at that. This is one of the most defined Good wedge tornadoes I've seen in Europe. So Belgium thick. gets struck all the time, including this tornado in 2020, this tornado in 2021, and even one as recently as last month on January 3rd, 2024. So far, we've only looked at F2 and F3 tornadoes, but if you want an F4 rated tornado, we don't even have to go that far back. One occurred as recently as 2008 in Northern France. This damage is very reminiscent of Tornado Alley in the US. Absolutely devastating. In this same area, we even have an ultra-rare, ultra-powerful F5. This is known as the Paluel F5. The tornado took the lives of six people and injured over 30 when it tore through the streets of Paluel, France, destroying buildings, throwing cars, lifting houses, with winds in excess of 200 miles per hour. This F5 was the strongest tornado of 1967, not just in Europe, but the entire world. It was also part of a larger tornado outbreak known as the 1967 Western Europe Tornado Outbreak. In addition to this F5, there were four F3s and one F4. Also within this tornado hotspot is the Netherlands. And the Netherlands is kind of known actually as Europe's tornado alley. And it's interesting because I thought Italy was the country in Europe that, that got the mo most tornadoes, or at least maybe one of the most popular tornado hotspots. That is in large part because it gets a ton of water spouts off of the coast. Every year I see crazy videos of water spouts hitting this area. It's just super active, super crazy. So it's like a little mini tornado hotspot within the hotspot that's within the alley, if that makes sense. And these tornadic water spouts can be very hazardous. For example, in 1972, seven were killed and over 90 were injured when a tornadic water spout hit the island of Amland. Just a few years ago, a man died when a tornadic water spout came ashore over the town of Zirikzee on June 27th, 2022. And of course, there's the story of NLM City Hopper Flight 431 mentioned in the intro. A very tragic story, and it just goes to show that even a weak F1 European tornado yeah. is still a serious hazard. Overall, this hotspot is extremely active. If you live in Europe and you want to see a tornado, move Get to like the... <laughs> right here. That's your best chance right there. Before we get to the most active tornado region in Europe, a few quick honorable tornado alley mentions. There's the Polish tornado alley in South Central Poland, 
This region was particularly active between 2003 and 2008, as it saw four F3s within that stretch of time. That's quite a bit for such a small area. I also want to mention an F4 tornado that I recently covered in my Out of Place Tornadoes video. This tornado hit southern Moravia within the Czech Republic. It occurred on June 24th, 2021, making it the most recent F4 tornado to occur in Europe. All right, there's another significant part of Europe that gets really extreme tornadoes, and that's Italy. And Italy actually has three mm, tornado alleys within itself. There's the yeah. one near Rome that had an EF3 as recently as 2016, resulting in two fatalities. There's also a bit of a hot spot near the heel within the Italian boot a very active waterspout region, but what I want to focus on is a very active tornado alley in northern Italy, an area that I call the Northern Italian Tornado Corridor. This area is very similar to Tornado Alley in the US, but instead of getting warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico, we get warm, moist air from the Mediterranean Sea. This humid air then mixes with the cool, dry air from the Alps, and boom you get yourself a tornado alley. This hotspot has an F4 tornado as recent as July 8th, 2015. A large cone-shaped tornado struck the Riviera del Brenta, a region near Venice known for its villas and waterways. The tornado caused significant structural damage in the towns of Dolo and Mira, including a large two-story villa, restaurant, and hotel from the 17th century, which was completely leveled to the ground. Many other structures were also severely damaged or destroyed, including holes from flying debris, damage to external walls, and partial or complete roof loss. There was only one confirmed fatality, but another F4 that occurred around the same location in 1970 would result in 36 fatalities. Oh. Most of the deaths were the result of a capsized ferry on the island of St. Elena. 21 people perished when a Venice public transport ferry was launched into the air, then forcefully returned to the surface. About 60 people were on board during the incident, and witnesses say that the ones who survived were the ones that were blown out while it was in the air. Oh this F4 was long-tracked, traveling over 70 kilometers with winds around 200 miles per hour. But it's not the most powerful tornado to strike this area. That belongs to the July 24th, 1930 Montello F5, perhaps the second most powerful tornado to strike Europe in recorded history after the 1764 Voidek Germany tornado. This tornado produced extreme damage, with winds in the 250 miles per hour plus range. It even destroyed a large church made out of stone. It traveled wow. over 80 kilometers, resulting in 21 fatalities and a- Because usually the buildings that get destroyed by tornadoes, they're like wooden structures. So to take down a, a stone building, that thing was powerful, man. 110 injuries. The church was so badly damaged that they actually had to demolish the remaining tower, shown here. Today, the North Italian Tornado Corridor is way more populated than it was back in 1930. So if a similar tornado event happened in modern times, it would be extremely devastating. Uh, Spain and Portugal don't see much tornadic activity. Sometimes you get a couple things on the coast in Portugal. Um, but, but, fun fact, the oldest ever depiction of a tornado occurred in Spain. This is from a tapestry known as the Conquest of Tunis. And do you see this tornado right here next to this mountain? That's the oldest depiction ever discovered of a tornado. Wow, ever. Cool. Well, that concludes the video on huh. Europe's Tornado Alley. Super interesting, fascinating. Like he did such a great job in breaking all that information down. So it seems like the Netherlands and Italy are the two main hotspots. Germany to a degree as well. Maybe those three countries in particular. Um, obviously I know that tornadoes are super dangerous. They can be like deadly, but I would really love to just see one in person, obviously from a safe distance and ideally not an EF5, but just there's something about seeing these massive rotating air structures. It's just, it's insane. There's a new Twister movie coming out soon as well. Like that will be fun to watch. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.